I, I want to talk about the Pasha a little bit, yeah? Pasha Shavua. Pasha Shavua is Saras, Metayra, Tazriya Metayra, yeah? I, I, I don't want to put you to sleep. I'm, I'm very good at putting people to sleep. Hi, Menachem Mendel, Shalom Aleichem. I don't want this to get boring and sheer-like, but nevertheless, I want to tell you this. I say this all the time. It's one of my regular rants. There's a Mishnah Mesech Techagiga. There's a Mishnah Mesech Techagiga that divides the Chumash into three groups. And this is brought in, in Mamor Echassidus, in Mamor of Nedor, in Pashas Mates. They bring this, this Mishnah in Gemara Echagiga. Because it's Negei in HaTadus Nedor. The Mishnah says that there's a level of Torah called Gufei Torah. Pardon me. Gufei Torah means the body of Torah. Then there's a level of Torah which is called Harorim Hatluyim Bishaira. Harorim Hatluyim Bishaira means mountains hanging on a hair. And the third Madrege is called Oisriyos Porchais Ba'avir Ve'ein Lohem Almashe Yismoich, which means in English, letters flying in the air, floating in the air, and they have nothing to support it. This is the mission says in Chagigan. The Torah has three categories. There are things in Torah that are called Gufei Torah, the body of Torah. Then there's things in Torah which are called Harorim Atluyim Beshaira, mountains hanging on a hair. And then there's something else called Oisius Perichlava, letters flying in the air. What is the example for these three? Gufei Torah means those mitzvahs in Torah that are written in the Chumash so clearly that the Chumash is like a Shulchan Aruch. What are examples of, uh, of, of, of ideas in Torah which are written so clear in the Torah you're almost only Teresh Ba'apeh? The best example is Karbonus. Pashas Vayikr, Pashas Sav. The details of Karbonus written in Chumash are like in Rambam. It's all written. You have to guess, you have to interpret, it's all there. Gufei Torah. Another example of Gufei Teira is Tumentare. Metzaira is Gufei Teira. You know, people wonder how come in Pasha's Tazir there's not so many Rashis. You know why in Pasha's there's so many Rashis? Because what the Rashi normally says in most Pasha's, in Pasha's Tazir, it says in the Pasuk. <laughs> you need Rashi to tell you what the Pasuk means when the Pasuk is being vague. In Pasha's Tazir, there's no, the, 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 the dinim of Taras are told in Chumash. With so much detail, you almost don't need mafash. It's the tale that tells what the is. And the same is true in the chitas of tomorrow's Friday, the chitas of, Sh- of Shabbos. Ba'alochas um, of Zov and Zova and Keri and Nida. Over there you need a little bit of Rashi, because the Pesukim are not so clear. But it's also, it's a whole page, I think it's Lamed based Pesukim, that goes through all the different, there's four Tumas that are called Yetzei Alav Migufa, that come out of the person's body. There's two Thomas by a woman, it's called Nida and Zova. And there's two Thomas by a man, it's called Keri and Zov. And the Torah Pashat spells out the Pratma of these Thomas, you don't have to have Teresh This is called Gufei Torah, the body of Torah. And then you have Harari Matluyim Beshaira, mountains hanging from a string, from a thread, from a hair. What's an example of Harari Matluyim Beshaira? Hilchas Shabbos. How many times in the Chumash is Shabbos mentioned? I think it's mentioned 50 times or 49 times. A, a, an incredible number of times. But if you look at what's written in the Chumash in Shabbos, and you look what's written in, in the Gemara and the Mishnah and the Shechon in Shabbos, it's not there at all. The Lamed Tes Malachas of Shabbos are where? The Lamed Tes Malachas of Shabbos, where are they in the Chumash? You have Heitzah, maybe. You have Tchumen, yeah, maybe. And you have Eish. That's it. And all three of these guys are called Malachas Klilas. There's something wrong in them. Lachalek Yotzes, Lalav Yotzes, Malachas Klila, right? We're the Lamatas Malachas of Shabbos. It's all about Peh. Rabbi Haida Havab Mishkan Chshivi is a Malach. So the Misha says that Hilchas Shabbos, the Lamatas Malachas of Shabbos, are called Harodim. They're a mountain hanging from a thread. And the same is true Tfilin, the same is true Mezuzah. There's many mitzvahs that you learn from, from a word, or from a letter, or from one Pasuk, a whole bunch of dinim. And in the Chumash, you know, the, all the lochs of Shechita. Are any of you guys learning Semel Chadasha? Anybody here learning Semel Chadasha? 
Shechita, anybody? Nobody? Some Lachadoshe is a sefer of Shechita that you're supposed to learn every month. You finish all the halachas of Shechita. Some Lachadoshe begins with the Pasuk in Pasha Zerei, I think, that you should shecht animals like I told you to shecht. So it says in Chazal, this is a raya, that um, there's halacha l'meisha mesinai, how you're supposed to shecht. All the dinim of Shechita, Vestach, Drasa, and Chalada, and Shehiya, and all the other things, it's all in the Rabbanim. The, the whole source of Shechita and the Chumash is one Pasuk that says, like I told you, Chuvarora Matruim B'Shayra. And the third Madrege is what the mission says, Heten Edarim. Eim Eisi Es Perech Es Ba'avir, if Eim Lehem Amashi Es Mechol. Hataras Nedarim is not even a Remes in the Teira. Hataras Nedarim is Bechlal, not in the Chumash. The whole, Hataras Nedarim is considered a Deir. I say it's entirely Balpeh, Halachal Meshav Yisrael. It doesn't even have a Remes. <coughs> anyway, so the Mishnah says, I'll give you these three categories of Teira. Things that are written very clearly. Things that you learn from a riddle. And things that are Bechlal, Ruchnius. And when you, so, so this is the, this is the Mishnah. There's a lot of Hasidis, a lot of Hasidis on this. And the way Hasidis would say it is, the highest Madrege is Eisiyas Perechet Ba'avir Ve'ein Lehem Amashi Yismaychu And the lowest Madrege would be Gufei Teira. But you can, you know, in, in discussions like this, you can say everything both ways. On the one hand, Gufei Teira is the highest thing, and on the other hand, Eisiyas Perechet Ba'avir Ve'ein Lehem Amashi Yismaychu is the highest thing. But when it comes to Tzaras, yeah, what's the Pshat? The, <laughs> I'll put it to you in these words. The Chumash is a Tzilas. The Chumash is a Tzilas. The Lamed Test Malachas of Shabbos are not happening in a Tzilas. No one is hachedesh v'azereya that the vestach was the lashon of Mishnah Tana sedura the past nugget in atzilus nobody is plowing and seeding and and cutting and thrashing and winnowing and uh, gr- milling grinding and then sifting and then kneading and then baking no one's doing that in atzilus that happens in asiyah the only part of Shabbos which is in atzilus is kiddush. The holiness of Shabbos, the Nishdruchnius of Shabbos, what the Altarebbe calls in the end of the Tanya, uh, the Pnimius of Shabbos. Tsaras is an Atzilus disease. Do you know why Tsaras has so many Psukim in the Chumash? Because the Torah was written for Atzilus, Tsaras or Atzilus illness. Finished. And it explains why the Alochas of Shechita Areme is not explicit. Because in Atsilas they're not eating meat. <laughs> in Asiya we eat meat. No? And 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 the Torah of Atsilus speaks to Asiya, like it says the famous Ramami Panas brought in the Sikhis. Hatoirim at Abedas Bal Yainim Umara Mezis. Bishniyas Bitahtainim. So those parts of Torah that take place in Atsilus are written in Atsilus Parikas. Those parts of Torah that are not Atsilus Dik, they're from lower worlds, are written by Remis. And carbones are in Atsilas. That's why carbones are told in so much detail. And Tsaras is in Atsilas. It's, it's a weird thing about Tsaras, right? We translate Tsaras as leprosy. I, I'm on the computer all day long, so I saw from, from JLI, I guess. JLI, right? JLI sounds right, yeah? One of the Chabad, the Shluchim's forums that sends out classes. It was either JLI or Chabad.org. And the headline was, Is Tzaraz leprosy? And of course the answer is no. Leprosy is an illness. We know what leprosy is. If you can open up medical journals, you can see what leprosy is. Tzaraz is a Ruch Nizik Machler. The Rambam writes, the Rambam doesn't say clearly, when you read the Rambam, you get the impression that Tzaraz in the Bosor is a natural illness. But Tzaraz in the Begodim and Tzaraz in the Batim are uh, are miracles. It's an it's an Atsilas disease. So I got good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is that unless you live in Atsilas, don't worry, Remy, you gotta turn off your sound. Unless you live in Atsilas, don't worry, you're not becoming a Mitzvah. It's an Atsilas disease. That's one side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is what kind of 
Inyan could be a problem in the Neshama Da'atzilus, that he becomes Tommy with Taras. He has to go Chutz L'Sholish Machnev, and he has to be Bodad Yeshe, Bodad, Quarantine, Mechutz L'Machnev, Meshave. One of the most uncomfortable things about a Mitzayra is that it's a mitzvah in the Torah to say, Tommy, Tommy. You know, a guy's Tommy. He's embarrassed. He has to hide out, he has to go ahead, he has to go out of the he has to go out of Yerushalayim, has to go out of wherever, he has to go to the Harabai, he has to go out of the Azora, out of the Harabai, out of Yerushalayim. But you don't have to, you see a person's tummy, you have to go scream in the street, Tommy, Tommy. By a Mitzayra, the din is, the Pasuk says, you have to say, Tommy, Tommy. What's the guy's Aveda? What did he do? He's in the Shama Datsilis. And of course, the Vart is, look from Gamna Shechna. Because it's such a high madrege, there is a, such a high standard. So the Rebbe, of course, explained this. You have in the Chesidus about Tzaras is called Sagirusa in Arami, in Targum. And Chesidus develops what Sagirusa means. And you know, by the way, for those of you who, who learned Chumash Rashi this week with little attention, one of the weird things about Tzaras is what? Parach Bekuleh. That hafach kulei lovan is tahir. If his person's entire body is taras, he's not tummy. And then one drop of michya returns to the body of this guy, that hafach kulei lovan, ah, now he's tummy. So a person who has no taras is cool. A person who's kulei taras is right there cool. If you have a little taras, a little not taras, ah, tummy, tummy, yikra. That's the way it works. And you have to, of course, understand all the, the, the ramifications of this. The Nekuda that the Rebbe says in the Sikh, the Rebbe spoke about this, the Azriya Mitzayda, in 1991, which is 29 years ago this Shabbos. The Rebbe said, Taras means, Avram Allah, you have to turn off the sound. Taras means a person who's perfect on all the deeper levels. The only chisarin he has on the outside. Now, let's think about this. Let's think about this. Now, I don't know you guys personally, and you don't know me personally, and I'm very happy about that. Which part of you matters most to you? What people see or what no one sees? Which part of you do you care about? I'm not talking about Luba HaTzadik, Menachem Medel HaTzadik. Farmers to mention, the Mala mention. We all care about our perception. We don't want people to see us, you know, the Gemara says, it's brought to the mind, Shalei and Adam. The first thing is I don't want to get caught. The first thing that matters to any person is what people see. What you do in the privacy of your own home. What's going on under your levushim. What nobody sees. It's important. But as long as they don't get caught, it's nishkeferlech. Right? It's a fact of life. And the more internal it is, the more difficult it is to care. Right? To care about what I do, it matters a lot. Especially in public. To compare to hear what I say matters also quite a bit. What I think, no one knows what I'm thinking. There's not a lot of people who are there in people who read people's thoughts. And Beklal, people who read people's thoughts know how to keep their mouths shut, you know. Where's the Maizim mit Nalt Nereb? Nalt Nereb said once that Pinchas raises, he says, Pinye, Nalt Nereb had a chos, Pinchas raises very close to him. He says, Pinye, mein mechut and light tzaris. The mechut of Nalt Nereb was a helik of a ditch of it, I believe, Yitzhak of a ditch of so he says, my mechutn, that means my, my, our, we, they, their grandchildren write each other. The badich of it of is suffering. Why is he suffering? In his town, there's a rich man. And this rich man did a delicious, juicy Aveda. He did mamish an Aveda, he is that to that, Mr. Mahadrin. But nobody knew. He did a Bechad Echadarim. Problem is, the badich of it is Bechad Echadarim. And he knew what the guy did, Bechad Echadarim. So he called him on it. He says, Russia, fed. How did you do this? But this Gavir knew that the Badich didn't catch him. He didn't have closed circuit TV. He only knew it Baruch HaKadosh. So he began to attack the Badich and to harass him. He gave, he gave it back to him. The Badich was attacking him for doing an Aveda. He attacked him. Also, you also a low life, you know. Like the Gemara says, the Rosh Hashiva says to the Talmud, Tul kiss him, take out a little spindle, a little toothpick. From between your teeth. So he answers the Rosh Hashiva, Tol Kaira Mibeinecha. You got a big, huge log between your two eyes, and you're worried about my toothpick. I got a little tiny, I have a very, very huge of it. So the Alter Rebbe said to Pinchas Rezes, 
He spoke in Yiddish. My mechutin light tzaras. My mechutin is suffering. He saw by a gvir an inyif and an aveda. And he called him out on it. And now the guy is harassing him. And then the Alter Rebbe said, Un em is vert. He deserves it. Why? He said, I see what's going on by the next guy. I keep my mouth shut. Veretem gebet and said, Aiden, let's open his big mouth. You see a guy who doesn't have Aiden, yeah. So you open your mouth. And he knows he's not with Oh, it's your word against mine, you understand? There's no witnesses. This is human nature. We care most about what people see. And deeper levels, is, it's, it's called Pnimius. You know, it's called Pnimius. Where my heart is, where my mind is, where my soul is, where my subconscious is, where my essence is. These are levels, the, the deeper and the greater and the higher the person, the deeper and the greater the higher the depth of integrity that we seek. What's a Metzeda? What's a Metzeda? What's the personality? The last thing he worries about is what you see. The last thing he worries about is. Now, what kind of human being doesn't care what you see? What kind of human doesn't care what you see on the outside? Either a total Eiswarf, a total Freyak like you never saw, or a Tzaddik and a Pni Mishen Komeyo. A person who's involved in Avedas Hashem just Lashem Shamaim. And he's not thinking about Reuven, he's not thinking about Shimon, he's not thinking about his parents, he's not thinking about his children, he's not thinking about his teachers, he's not thinking about his students. He's thinking, no, maybe it's not lame. So a Metzoyda, to start with, is the opposite of most people. Why? Most people, the first thing they care about is what everybody sees. What's a Metzoyda? All of the inside layers are clean. There's a Chesarin only on the surface. So it's, it's not just that a Metzoyda is a bigger person than a regular person. A Metzoyda is the diametrical opposite of a regular person. He's such a Pnimi, he's so involved in what's important and what matters, that if you see a Chassan on the outside, you know, he says, Mehecha Teise, it's not that big a deal. You know, there was a big Chassid, his name was Abshel Brook. <coughs> quite famous, he had a lot of Talmidim. If Shelbuk was a, he, made, he was a chassidish shahid, as a bamasid, nefesh. He came to Etch Yisrael and he made Taim Chatmimim. There was Taim Chatmimim in Tel Aviv. He made his own Taim Chatmimim in Tzien. I, I have a friend whose name is Yossi Lerman. His father now also passed away from this terrible Magefa, Reb Tzvi Abba Lerman, before Pesach. And when we were in Yeshiva, my friend told me that his father learned by Reb Sheil. He says, Reb Sheil knew Baal Peh. The whole Shas and the whole Rambam. He knew Baal Peh, the whole Shas and the whole Rambam. And he was constantly quoting Gemara's and constantly quoting Rambam's. And every time he quoted a Gemara or Rambam, he would say, Dachzach. I think, I think it says in Gemara on this page, this Mesechta. I think it says in Rambam in this Halacha. And he was never wrong. The Talmudim used to check. He would say, I think, I think it says here. I think, and he was never wrong, Rabshael. But Reb Sheil was a slob. <laughs> Reb Sheil, some Hasidim are very clean, and some Hasidim who don't know what a shower is. He was in the latter category, Reb Sheil. He, he came to the Rebbe for Tishrei Hest. He came to the Rebbe for Tishrei for 30 days with his talisman. You get it? You get it or not? He didn't bring an extra pair of socks. Now what happens to a person's socks? <laughs> After you wear socks for 30 days, huh? He came with his talismanist film, finished. This was Sheel Brook. And people used to say to him, Reb Sheel, you gotta take a shower to put on a new shirt. I, I think Reb Sheel didn't even wear a shirt. There's pictures, he has a capote, and only the capote, but you see his talus cotton. Reb Sheel was not, it wasn't his thing. It wasn't a, a, a fashion chassid. So there's somebody, one of his Talmudim once told him, it says in Halacha, it says in Chazal, Talmud Chacham Shenim Tzeravav Al Big Day. Talmud Chacham has a small little bubble, something not perfect about his outfit, his Chayiv Misa. So he says, Abshel, you're a Mamisha Slab, you're a God, and I have Boki Bishas, a Boki and Namba. And he's, uh, he used to blow his nose in his kapata, you understand? And then he didn't put to the dry cleaner, he blew his nose again. So someone said to Abshel, that's an image. Chazal say, Talmud Chacham, Shinim to the Vav Abig, they says, you know why it's Chayiv Misa? Because you have to have at least two. <laughs> One Chayiv Misa, at least two. If Shell was that kind of a man, 
He was, I mean, he was a special yid. But uh, the point is, the point is that's the char the character of the mitzvah. The character of the person who's suffering from taras is the last thing he worries about. Is what other people are going to see. Face There's so many stories. The Rebbe Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab moved from Lubavitch to Rostov at the end of his life. He had to run away from Lubavitch. He never went back. And he was constantly moving. It's a couple of years. He kept. He was in Slavinsk for a while. He was in. Oral for a while till he finally came to Rastov and then he bought an apartment and he lived in Rastov till he passed away. And of course the Friedrich Rebbe continued living in Rastov and so forth. A kid said, when the Friedrich Rebbe Rashab came to Rastov, Rebbe Rashab was from, the Rebbe you say about, Rebbe Rashab we say about him, I, Rebbe Rashab say about himself, I don't know why I'm so from, maybe it's because I come from Misnagdim, that's what Rebbe Rashab said. I don't know myself why I'm so from 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 I don't know what the word means, but that's what he said. The Rebbe Rashab had Pesach Kalim. The Pesach Kalim were in a crate, in a closed box. When they came to Rastov, the Rebbe Rashab decided that all the Pesach Kalim have to be kashed. Why? They became treif by sitting on a train, in a box. And the Rebbe Rashab the Kalim, shine, okay. So they make a big pot of hot water, boiling water, and they kashed the Kalim. And the Rebbe Rashab is the Mashgiach. He's watching them, Kasher the Caleb. And he was so upset. The end of the story was he took over the Kashering himself. He didn't trust whoever it was doing it. And he was literally, to make sure that the Caleb were completely immersed in the boiling water, he was physically putting his hand into boiling water. Again and again and again. Every pot, he pushed the pot into the boiling water, his hand went in with it. He was pushing, burning himself. Because Nebuch, the pace of the Kalim Atreif, they traveled from the Babish to the stuff. And then there was water all over the place. There was water flying. They had tenants. There were other people living in the building. And they were not so happy to have the Rebbe Rashab and his whole Chevre moving into the neighborhood because they made a lot of noise. There was water spilling on the floor. It was leaking downstairs. It was a disaster. But the Rebbe Rashab had the kasha, the paste, the kakelim, because they traveled from one place to another. So somebody in the house said to the Rebbe Rashab, Medaf Zachitin from the Shechenim, the neighbors as it is don't like us. And here you are making such a big timis, we're only going to have more tzadahs, you have to be careful from the neighbors. And the Rebbe Rashab got upset. And the Rebbe Rashab said, Wegen dem Shochen und Zorgstelech. The neighbor downstairs is bothering you. But the neighbor upstairs, you forgot about. The neighbor who sees the outside is your concern. The neighbor who sees the inside isn't your concern. So the whole concept of Adam, right? It doesn't say Enosh or Ish. It says Adam, the highest level. Adam. And so on. What kind of a person has an Atsilas disease? That's what it is. Tzadas is an Atsilas disease. What kind of a person has an Atsilas disease? And the answer is, he's a person that the last thing he worries about is what everybody sees on the outside. The problem is. The Abishta is also worried about the outside. The Mitzayra says, Mele, my heart is clean. My mind is clean. You know, I, I heard once that Reb Mendel Futafas was in the same Bechine as Shailbrook. If Reb Mendel Futafas took a shower once a week, I think it's a lot. Reb Mendel Futafas was a wonderful man. He was such a delicious man. But he stunk. <laughs> he smelled. He had a very distinctive smell. He didn't wash. Believe me, he didn't take a shower every day in the mikveh. He went to the mikveh every day, but he didn't take a shower. So one of his grandchildren, was a kid, said, Zaydi, you stink. In English. So the mental says, y you wish, you wish you were as pure as I am. In other words, I stink. Why does he take a shower? But you know what my mind is? You know what my heart is? You know how pure my body is in things that really matter? You worried about my stink? Why don't you worry about your stink? 
No, the Mendel said, he said to one of his eight o'clock, I, I, I smell. Halavai, you should smell like I smell. Because the smell that I have is only in the goof. It's not in the Levushim, it's not in the Levis, it's not in the Mayach, it's not in the Ratzin, it's not. It was a Chassidish. The Mendel was a big person. He really was a big person. She said, that's the, the Yesod of Taraz. The Yesod of Taraz is a person who doesn't care about Chitzanias, he cares only about Pneumias. And the Eivish there comes to the Metzayda and he says, I care about Chitzanias. It's Negea to me that the Chitzanias should be perfect. And if you're going to neglect your Chitzanias, I'm going to make you tummy. I'm going to force you to fix it. In other words, most people, most of us, work from the outside in. The personality, the personality, the personality of the Metzayda is that he works from the inside out. And he gets to the outermost layer and says, Eh, so I have a chasan. And the Abishah taps him on the shoulder and says, Excuse me. A prayer for It's not enough to be noki, klape maila, to be clean, like the Abishah. You have to be clean, like be a fellow person. Fakat, because you're such a big chasit, and because you're such a big tzaddik, and because you're such a big oivid, your chitsonius matters. He says, no, I'm happy people should say that I'm Oisvart. It's good, it's good that people should say it. The Abisha says, no, it's not. And the Matei says, I don't care. And the Abisha says, I do care. I'm going to give it saras. I'm going to send you out of the camp. And you're going to be all by yourself. And we're going to scream, tummy, tummy. Because the Abisha cares about Chitzenius also. And this is what the Rebbe says in the Sikhe. <coughs> From Tazim Matei, the Taka, 29 years ago, the Shabbos. And the Gemara says, that Mashiach is called Chivri de Bey Rebbe. Mashiach is called the Metzayr. Why? Is, and the Scott is another Gemara that he's Yerat Nidyeshev and the Pesach Eir and he's tying, opening his, he's full of band-aids, he's full of sicknesses. Why is Mashiach a Metzayr? So the Rebbe says a Chiddush. Mashiach is a Metzayr not because the only place where has a chassad is on his chitenius. Mashiach is chassid gomer v'seigel tachalun. Mashiach is perfect. The generation is imperfect. And Mashiach is a chivra. Mashiach is white. Mashiach is a metayra. When the collective Jew, when all the Jewish people are clean on all levels except for the outside, the Eibishter makes Mashiach the kedu of metayra to tell him, Hezachayin, the outside also needs to be cleaned up. The outside also needs to be Tahir. And if it's not going to be Tahir, then it's going to be Yifim Tumah. That's the word of uh, Adam, like it says in the Kutatera. Adam, Kiyah Be'er Besare, Se'es, Etapach, Etapach, A Metzayre is a person that's Toicho is Yes al Bari. He cares about what's inside even more than what people see. And the Abisha tells him that's not true. It's more important to think about what's inside than outside. But what's going on on the outside matters also. And if you're not going to care about it, I'm going to make you care about it. So when you ask yourself, how come there's probably a hundred psukim about saras, and there's two words about, I don't know what, <laughs> about shechita, why? It's not fair. It's not equal time. Tzaras is an illness. That's, it's, it's a pella. It doesn't happen. It only happened in the olden times. Nobody's a metzayda today. Two pa- a pasha and a half, right? Last week we had almost the whole pasha was about Tzaras. And this week, tomorrow is Friday, yeah? What are we in tomorrow's chitas? Tumas, uh, nigay batim. Tzaras and homes. It's, 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 it's probably a hundred psukam on Tzaras. And the guy says, listen, why don't you give me a hundred psukam on Shechita and one pasach on Tzaras? Shechita is every day. Tzaras has never happened. And the Torah says the Torah is written in Atzilus. And Tzaras is an Atzilus disease. Shechita is not an Atzilus. Shechita is in the lower worlds. So Shechita is Beremes. And Tzaras is written explicitly because in the Madrega of Atzilus. The problems that people have in Atzilus is this. <coughs> 